everybody, and welcome to week two of our summer midlong, also known as our summer cow. Uh, for this project, we're featuring the butterfly cowl, a stunning piece of um, almost like knitted jewelry, neck adornment, and it'll keep us warm when the weather cools down a bit. It is designed by Marinja and she is um, a well-known shawl and accessory designer on Ravelry. So please do give her page a bit of a look-see if you're on Ravelry just to see all the gorgeous colors she uses, a lot of self-striping yarn like we're using, some earth yarn. Um, yeah, so the details on the cowl are short rows, uh, striping, garter stitch, tiny bit of lace, We've added a pico edge as an optional element and knit in beads. It is knit in the round, so there is no sewing to do. And the reason that we chose this particular project at this uh, time of the year is, um, just have to find you here on video, is because it symbolizes our transformation, which is taking place after far too long being in our cocoons. So it is a very timely piece. So last week, if you happen to miss the video, you can still watch it on our events page. Just look for the event tab, top of the um, home page, click on it, go to Summer Cow, you see a picture of this lovely project. And in there you'll see um, tutorials on make one left, make one right, the increases that we will be using, how to cast on and do the garter tab was featured in the first week's video. Very important to learn that for this project or any other future shawl that you might be doing. Short rows, uh, the wrap and turn method is perfectly fine and there's a good um, tutorial listed that will help you through that section. Eventually we'll be getting into the lace work. I don't know if any of you are at that point this week. If you are, feel free to Post in the comments, say hello, and tell us how your progress is going. And next week we'll get to the bead knitting. Uh, something that's not explained in the pattern because it's not an included element, but it does dress up this cow. So I'm going to bring it closer to the camera so you can see that. All the pretty elements. So the cowl is worked, here is the cast on, contrast color cast on, it's worked down and there are central increases, so you'll have markers along the spine we call it, and you can see how the short rows create these really interesting wing patterns. And because it's a self-striping yarn worked with the contrast color in black, the colors sort of change on their own and create their own metamorphosis. The lace work is just enough that you know it's there. I think we did six rows according to the pattern and then we did a pico cast off and the beads are knitted in, which is much easier than sewing them in or stringing them onto the yarn. So that is what we will be working on this month. And the colors that we have left in store, if you're thinking of taking on the knit along, feel free to join us anytime. This is the color that was used, the color combo in our sample. And some of you have gone into a really nice, bright tangerine coral, turquoisey green combination. I'll be posting a picture of one of the cowls finished in this color combo in the next week. So yes, it's a very addictive pattern. Once you start, you'll want to knit, oh, more than one, maybe two or three. Some of you who are not really um, feeling that the cowl is satisfying enough have opted to do the butterfly shawl. 
So it's really the same concept, except it is a much larger project. And that is the third color combination. The green, that pretty lilac, the oranges, the golds. And that can pair with the navy for contrast or the black. The black really makes it look like stained glass from what we've been told. So those are the color combos left in stock. We have sold out quite a few, but feel free to message or call the shop if you're still interested in um, starting with one of those shades. Um, and the yarn is Superwash Extra Fine Merino, 100 grams. So you just need one skein of the self-striping and one little mini 20 grams for the contrast color. If you're doing the shawl, you need two skeins of the self-striping and 100 gram of your contrast color. So a much bigger skein than what I've shown you here. Needle size for the cowl, they did suggest a 2.75 millimeter, but uh, for many of us, we've gone up to a three millimeter. It will make, make the uh, pattern work a little bit easier to see on a slightly larger needle. It also softens up the overall fabric and opens up a bit more of the lace work and the details. So that is the three millimeter circular 24 inch that we're using. Feel free to start your project on a straight needle, but know that eventually you'll have to transition onto a circular to join it in around so it fits around the back of the neck without buttons or seams. And if you are thinking of putting in the beads, I don't have any beads in stock. I did purchase mine at Michael's, the craft store, and I have a link in our event page to the Michael's website, straight to the beads section. You can see them all and order them online or purchase them online and pick them up in person. So they just have to be a nice glass bead and good quality in a color that really uh, flows nicely with your choice of yarn. And I think I counted 24 beads for this pattern. So the instructions for that will be coming up next week. Um, and then you also have to make sure that you can fit a crochet hook through your bead. So our beads work on a 1.25 millimeter hook quite easily. So those are all the tools you need. Lots of stitch markers. Um, good lighting if you're working on it at night time. And I just want to say hi to two of our new knit alongers who joined us this week, Joyce and Jeanette. They'll be watching from afar and catching up on their progress too. We will have a grand prize draw at the end of the month for one lucky knit alonger. And the ballot box has ballots filled in, I filled them in for everyone who has purchased the yarn and is participating whether you're doing it online or in person. So that holds one ballot for every sign up. And then every week we have a little incentive ballot that you can win that will come at the end of the video. So that will double your chances of winning. And each week I've been adding, or I will be adding a few little extras to the grand prize draw. Beautiful butterfly worthy uh, wool in there. Looks like maybe a worsted or chunky weight. I've added some rainbow stitch markers and there are some needles in there too. So, um, any tips that I can offer you this week? I know I mentioned quite a few last week. Most importantly, don't read too far ahead in your pattern. Many of you have found that out. It distracts you and confuses you. Um, I think the most important tip to remember is you can play with the color in the yarn. So if you're getting too much of a green patch and you want a little bit more of the purple or the magenta, just stop the green, wind the yarn to get to the color that you prefer. So that will happen a few times throughout the shawl and the cowl. The shawl you'll have to be a little bit more careful with how much yarn you're going to waste. Uh, the cowl you've got 100 grams which is enough to knit two cowls easily. So if you're cutting, stopping, starting, and you end up with three little balls left over, they can go into your, your next project. Good yarn never goes to waste. 
So what I want to show you this week in the demo is how to carry the yarn along the side of the work. And that is going to be important at, well, they'll tell you in the pattern where the yarn has to be carried. Um, it won't happen right away, so that gives you time to get used to the short rows and the pattern. But you can see along here, it's easy to carry the yarn up if it's only two rows in between. So that's the rule of thumb. But when you have a long stretch of the main color in this section, you don't want to cut the uh, contrast color, which is the black, and keep restarting it. That's too many ends to sew in. You want a nice, professional, seamless look. So there is a way to hide the contrast color behind the second stitch on every right side row during this section, which is done in the main color. So that's going to happen once, twice, three times, four times, five times if you're doing the cowl. And the reverse side is very neat. Because it's a high contrast color, you want it to be well hidden. So that is my contrast color in the black being carried along the second stitch from the edge to where it will be knit next. So it doesn't show on the right side and it only shows very, very uh, minor here on the wrong side. And who looks at the wrong side anyway? So I'm going to give you a quick demo with some um, thicker yarn, but also high contrast colors. And I've also put uh, a written instruction with pictures on the event page. So you can see here my high contrast is the lime green or yellow for my contrast and the main color is the, the bright pink. I've already carried twice along the edge with my contrast color because I have to carry it every time I start the right side row. So at the back, there is my contrast color being carried on the second stitch of the main color. Okay, and more importantly, how you do that is you always knit your first stitch with the main color. So let's knit that one, get it out of the way. Okay, so one stitch knit in the main color, then I insert my needle into the second stitch. But before I knit it with the main color, I take the contrast color over my right needle. And then I bring my main color into knit position. I'm all thumbs here, but we'll get through this. Okay. So I've knit into my second stitch. I haven't completed the stitch. I'm going to take my contrast color over the right needle, and then I'm going to pick up my main color and knit and complete the stitch. So all I've done at the back is twist the contrast color over the main color before I finish knitting a stitch. It's exactly the same process as when you do your fair isle knitting, but you have to remember you're not carrying the yarn across the row. You're leaving the contrast color hanging at the beginning of the row. And the back of that, you can see it's being carried up once, twice, and now a third time. And the other thing to remember too is be careful that you're not going to tighten up the yarn that's being carried as you get to your next section where you're going to use it because that's going to pinch in the edge. You want there to be a little bit more of relaxed tension so it looks completely normal on the right side and not noticeable. So if this demo was hard to see because it's so close to the screen, um, please do check the event page and you'll see step by step I've typed it into a post 
and then I put a picture of the towel on the right side and the wrong side to show you what it looks like. So, fun fact about butterflies. Did you know a butterfly can travel at a speed of up to 12 miles per hour? So just imagine how much distance they can cover in a day if they, if they are traveling outside of their area. Um, and now for the incentive ballot. We're not going to pick the speediest reply. We're just going to pick somebody randomly who has the correct answer. And uh, whoever wins this incentive ballot will get another name on a ticket into our draw bucket towards the grand prize at the end of the month. So what is the name for a person who studies butterflies? Probably something I've never heard of before. I've never met anyone who studies butterflies or collects them. But there are many people in the world that do study and collect them, so it's worth learning this word. Quite a long word. So I'll leave you with that to um, dwell on and see if you can come up with the right answer. Please post it in the comments. Hi, Karen. Um, Okay, and then the last thing I want to leave you with is um, just a nice quote about butterflies before we head into our weekend of cooler weather, hopefully in Ontario. We've had a real steamy week. Hope it's been cooler where, you, where you're sitting and knitting. We delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. Does anyone know who um, came up with that quote? It's very beautifully written. And I think it applies to much of what we've been going through for the first, for the last 18 months or so. Not that I'm keeping count. So if anybody wants to post who they think um, came up with that beautiful quote, somebody very well known and female. Oh, we've got some answers coming in. Ah, it didn't take anybody long to figure that one out. Okay, well, I'll let the answers continue to come in after the video airs, and then we'll pick one random winner. Because again, it's not about being the fastest, it's just guessing and having fun. So yes, yeah, so that is all I can really tell you about um, tips and techniques this week, because a lot of it was at the very beginning, which was last week's video. And then next week, we'll be really getting into the nitty gritty with knitting and the beads doing the lace work, adding on the Pico Edge if you so desire. So that will be more uh, lengthy. And I will be posting a beautiful uh, whip work in progress in the next hour or so. Uh, one of our knit alongers who has chosen to do the shawl and she is using completely different colors. She's not going with self striping, she's going with um, hand dyed for her main color. Two different colors that work together and she's chosen a very, very pale color for her contrast color. So I know you want to see what, what the transformation is looking like. So look for that also on the event page and I'll put it in Instagram stories and Facebook stories too. Thanks everybody for joining me today and I hope you have a great weekend, get lots of knitting done and enjoy every single stitch because I know I will be. And I'll be back here next week at 4 p.m. on Friday for the third week of our knit along. 